Good morning. I just stepped outside a little bit ago to go get something from the car and almost didn't come back in. It's nice out there. So glad that you are here on this uh, Sunday in December. We have uh, our missions Sunday today for missionaries. If you can uh, contribute to their uh, work, the offering plate is in the back for that purpose, the Scots and the Shaws. Also, next Christmas Eve, um, on the, that's a week from tomorrow night, we will be having a two, our two services, four o'clock will be a communion service for those who won't make the evening. And then we're doing the evening service at seven o'clock, uh, being that it's a week night and there are people needing to get off of work and be able to get around to come. Uh, we place it at seven instead of six o'clock. And yes, I did misspell candlelight. So, so just keep that in mind for our Christmas Eve service. Also, beginning the new year, and I'm going to start uh, uh, presenting it now so that we can be thinking about it. I want to do a, a mailing to all of our membership and hope that we can get uh, folks, perhaps, that aren't uh, active, haven't been coming to church for a while, maybe to make a New Year's resolution to to uh, start back to church the first of the year. We're going to do so with a, with a great sermon series under the theme of Established. We're going to go for six Sundays, knowing God, hearing from God, talking with God, serving God, sharing God. We're going to have us a wonderful uh, kickoff for our new year. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to uh, talk it up to others, uh, encourage them to make that resolution that they're going to get back to church and to come and uh, we'll have a great uh, beginning of the new year. I'm sure that we will not be disappointed. It will be a wonderful, a wonderful time for us to uh, learn, to grow and to become uh, more like our Savior Jesus Christ who we are remembering during this Advent season. Okay, today is uh, the third Sunday of Advent, and Emily is going to light our candles for us today, as Jan will come and uh, share the uh, devotional thought that is related to it. Good morning. The first Sunday of Advent, we acknowledge the hope that was expressed through the prophet of a coming Messiah by lighting the first purple candle. Last Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, we lit the second purple candle and talked about the Prince of Peace. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light the pink candle, the candle of joy. I love that word. A favorite Christmas carol is Joy to the World. It speaks of the coming of the Lord, but we, but not just any Lord. He is the King of all kings. We are admonished to prepare room for him in our hearts. For truly, a great light has shined in the darkness. On the night of Christ's birth, angels proclaimed the event bring, bringing to mind the words of the psalmist. Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth burst into jubilant song with music. And then Jesus told his disciples in John 15, 9, 11, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. May God bless the reading of His Word. 
Okay, and uh, before Emily goes down, we're going to, she's going to play a little special song for us. She says, hello friends of Salem, thanks for all your kindness and joyful times we have spent in God's presence. The many times we have praised God for the many blessings while we were together over the past year. I arrived back in Tennessee without any trouble. God knew what he was doing when Marcella and Jim Davis paths crossed mine. They knew the way far better than I did. I thank God for them every day. That was the couple, she was the nurse at the hospital when Jan was in the hospital that Elaine uh, met and they were from Tennessee and going back right at the time she needed to go so they helped her uh, do that. And then she uh, goes on and talks about her granddaughter's wedding which was on the 1st of December and she says, I have been praying, opening boxes and bags for days now. I'll keep you in my prayers. God's blessing on everyone. Sincerely yours, Elaine Akers. So I thought you would be uh, interested in, 
and hearing that this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessings that we have of fellowship, and we're glad that Elaine was able to be with us for a year, and that she was such a blessing to our fellowship. And we thank you for the blessings that you give to us as we think now about giving of our tithes and offerings. We just pray that what we give, we do so out of a heart of love and joy, gratitude for all that you've blessed us with. And may it bless your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Spirit, the one holy universal, 
Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Well, as we uh, prepare our hearts for prayer, we're going to dismiss the children. And if you'd like to go with Ryan, he's waiting in the back there for you. All the children, go join Ryan for Children's Church. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are grateful today for the worship experience that we have had already in the service. And we thank you for being here and being our help and, and our our teacher today. We acknowledge that you, Father, are the one that gives us everything that we have. And our worship, Father, to you is because we love you, because you have first loved us. And we thank you and we bless you today for who you are and who Jesus is, who came into this world as that little baby in a manger in those humble circumstances and taught us how we should live and not only taught us how we should live but empowered us to live by giving us the Holy Spirit Father today as we come to you as your children as your sons and your daughters we we just uh, come as we are with all of our cares and struggles every person who is in this house of worship today have had their struggles and there's you know what they are you know what the things that are um, involved involving their lives good and bad you know all about it and we thank you father today that we can just come to you and bring our needs to you we ask you father to be with our church family we pray father today that you'll be with the, our friend Roger Funk as he is recuperating from his, his uh, car accident. We pray for Janet Keller, Lord, that you will be with her today and continue to bring healing to her body. We want to pray for Esther Hessler today, Lord, that you will be with her and her uh, physical need at this time. Father, we want to also lift up our church family, our church ministries, we thank you, Father, today that you're working in our lives as we're, we've had a, a wonderful uh, church, uh, all church, a uh, business meeting last Sunday. And we thank you for the wonderful spirit that was there. We thank you for the beautiful uh, Christmas gathering that the ladies had at the Civic Center on Tuesday. What a beautiful and precious time that was for all who were there. We thank you for the Awana children, Lord, and for their opportunity to go caroling on Wednesday night, and we know that their precious little voices blessed uh, many of those folks that were there in the nursing home, and we thank you for that, Lord. We pray that you will bless our week ahead and next Sunday as we take our last Sunday of, of Advent uh, and, look, and look at that uh, last candle, the candle of love. We just pray, Father, you will just bring us together in the bond of love. And then Monday night, and the uh, Christmas Eve as we gather, Lord, may it just be a, a special, special time together. And then as the families get together on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we ask your blessing to be on, on them as they focus on their love for Jesus and their love for one another. Father, we pray for our nation. We ask that you will be with our leaders. 
We ask, Father, for a spiritual renewal in our land. That's the only hope that we really have. Jesus came to bring peace on earth, and it's not just a, a nice little sentiment that we sing where we all feel peaceful. It is what Jesus is. He came to bring peace, and only as we truly find Jesus as our Savior will we truly find peace. And Father, we pray for that peace in our land today. We pray for our military men and women that you will be with them, many away from home this time of year. And we know it's not easy. Just be with them, be with their families, bring, the, bring them home safely. We pray, Father, that you will be with our veterans. We thank you for each one of them. Bless their lives today for their service. We pray for our communities, Lord. We pray for our county government and our city governments around here. Lord, we just ask that there will be a, a true spirit of Christmas and that Christ will reign supreme in the hearts and lives of the people of our community. We pray for our schools, for the teachers, the students, the administrators, the janitors, everybody in the school, the bus drivers, all of those who are involved in the school. We pray for them. We lift them up to you. We pray, Father, for our first responders today. And as we as we go through the week and we hear the sirens and we, we see them rushing from this uh, emergency to that emergency, Father, we just pray that you will be with them. We thank you for them. We pray for their protection. We pray for the, our community, Lord, that we will be a safe community. And thank you for those who are helping to make it so. And Father, we pray today that you will be with uh, all of those who are sick. We have many of our number that are experiencing sickness uh, this weekend and who are not here today. About half of our praise team is not here because of illness. And Father, we just pray that you will be with those families and bring a touch into their lives. And Father, we thank you today that you're with us to lead us and guide us in everything that we do. And we are so pleased to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So this first song was written by the grandson of an, of an American slave. Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem to Mary and Joseph on Christmas Day. Because of his life, his death, and resurrection, we are reconciled to God. We conquer death and we live forever in his presence. He was born in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. During the Christmas season and all through the year, I pray that we have left room for him in our hearts. For that little, little boy child. So let's sing that together. Mary's little boy child.
you would take the Father and think of us above all. So let us give him the worship he deserves and sing. I've really been enjoying, and I hope that uh, you have too, our Wow God Advent uh, devotional, which we are in our beginning our third week of. 
And uh, for those of you who aren't up to speed with what we're doing, we are using the U version of uh, the app that is on, you can get on your phone or your tablet or your computer uh, to do the devotional that they have provided among many of their little devotionals called Wow God. And uh, for those of you who don't have a phone or tablet or not doing that kind of thing, we have printed up some hard copies of the devotionals for the week. So if you didn't get yours, uh, they were, they're available in the back. If you didn't get yours for this upcoming week, it starts uh, today, actually, today's devotional. Uh, you can pick up a copy of that. It has, it has seven devotionals in it. Uh, for this week and I uh, would encourage you to uh, do the devotional for each day on the uh, uh, app there's a place for us to actually to respond and on the little uh, devotional sheet that we have uh, provided there is a place for you to respond at the uh, at the bottom there uh, based on uh, your reading for that day what is one thing God is saying to you so as we uh, move uh, forward with uh, the lessons for this next week, I just want to ask, is there uh, anybody who wants to just share what God has spoken to you uh, and shared with you for this week? Did anybody write something down that you want to just uh, share with us? We're such a sharing congregation, you know, we, we love to share I do want to mention we do have two uh, uh, groups that are meeting uh, starting today, two of uh, Bible study groups. Um, one is meeting at the, uh, the Rhines, the other one meeting at the Pilkingtons. There's about 10 people in each group. We're actually to the place where we're, we could actually start another group. So uh, we, we might be uh, looking to do that. I think that's exciting. They're meeting, they're starting today. And meeting one time during the month of December and then beginning the first of the year they'll be meeting twice a month on the second and and uh, last the second and fourth uh, Sundays of the month in, the, in the, on Sunday evening and I would encourage you to become a part of our small group and they're actually today they're going to be looking at the devotional which is the devotional for today and the Wow God and what I'm doing in my sermon, sermon series is just going through each one of the devotionals for the week ahead and just kind of highlighting it and wetting the whistle a little bit and uh, getting you prepared for uh, doing the devotional readings throughout the week. So today we're looking at the uh, a Wow God. Every one of the devotionals starts with Wow God. The theme is You Love Us Without Judgment. You love us without judgment. Let's read that verse together. Romans 8, 1, shall we? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now I know because I'm human and I'm pretty sure that you are all human that each one of us have our moments of uh, self-judgment, self-depreciation. We get ourselves involved in things uh, and we blow it. We maybe get in an argument or something and we say something that we, we uh, perhaps shouldn't have said and we wish that we could take the words back. We wish that we hadn't said that. And so we get down on ourselves and kind of rehearse that over in our mind for a while and, and uh, are pretty, pretty tough on ourselves. And every one of us have had days in which we, we uh, uh, are just kind of plagued with, with judging ourselves for the past things that we have done. And what we need to understand and what this devotional points out is that, that my sin may be too much for me, but it is not too much for God. 
It says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he took care of that for us upon the cross. No one is perfect. Everyone except for the Lord Jesus Christ himself has their struggle with the things in life that we wish that we hadn't done or hadn't said. And sometimes it can be a weight around us, but it is a, a uh, refreshing thought to know that Christ paid the penalty for those things upon the cross, and when we come to Him, there is no condemnation for people who trust in Jesus Christ because His love is there. We have times when we don't forgive or want to forgive ourselves, and, and I think there's a connection also with forgiving others. I think oftentimes maybe we have trouble forgiving ourselves because we're not willing to forgive others. We're not willing to forgive someone else. What, is we, what do we pray every Sunday when we pray the prayer Jesus taught us? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us is what that means. And... Uh, when we are living in a spirit and attitude of forgiveness, then we can appreciate the no condemnation that is there that Christ has provided for us. So on today, we're looking at You Love Us Without Judgment. The Bible study groups are going to be actually using that devotional for their time of, uh, of Bible study tonight when they get together. And then on day 16, wow, God, you endured all my pain. Let's read the verse. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. When, when we... Uh, are in pain in our lives and we begin to uh, we begin to get discouraged and downhearted and we begin to complain it's good for us to understand what Christ endured for us on the cross the Bible doesn't tell us and Jesus never promised us that we wouldn't have pain. He never promised us that we wouldn't have difficulties, we wouldn't have struggles, but he did promise that he would be with us always. And he not only promised that he'd be with us, but he suffered for himself upon the cross and endured pain so that we don't need to grow weary and faint-hearted, that we can look to him for our help and for our strength. We're living in a world in which there is sin and pain all around us. And it's, there, it's a constant thing, constant beat like on the drums of guilt, 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 guilt. In fact, almost all advertising that you see on TV has some kind of a uh, element behind it in which is trying to make you be fearful of something so that you will buy that product to take care of it, right? I mean, if you, if you are dissatisfied with who you are as a person and there can come along an ad or something that will help you, that will tell you that if you do this, you're going to help yourself and make yourself feel better about yourself, then then we, you have responded to a message of guilt and a message of fear. It's all around us in our society. But we do not have to succumb to it. We do not have to grow weary. We do not have to become discouraged because Jesus Christ endured on the cross hostility from sinful people just as we experience that in our society. He experienced it in a tremendous way when he suffered for us while he went through his time of suffering and pain 
uh, through the cross. God endured all my pain. Let's say that together. Wow, God, you endured all my pain. It's not a pain that you've experienced in your life that he has not experienced that he does not know all about. Day 17, December 18th. Wow, God, you gave us Jesus to forgive us and reconcile us to you. Let's read the verses, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. This principle that is taught in this verse is one of the most important principles that you will ever learn. And that is the principle of confessing with your mouth. One reason that I love doing our affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed, is because we are confessing with our mouth. We are making a confession with our mouths of what we believe. And there is power in that. Oftentimes we keep it inside. We can say, well, isn't it enough for me to just think it? I'll just think it. I'm not going to say it. I'll just think it. But there is almost a magic to actually saying it, speaking it, speaking your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, speaking a confession of, of faith in in your healing, a confession of, of a speaking for the confession of, of God's provision in your life if you're, if you're in need of that financially or something, speaking it, confessing that God is working in your life. Believe it in your heart, confess it with your mouth. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. It, it works together. Believing and confessing with the mouth. It's one of the most important principles you'll ever learn in your Christian walk. On day 18, December 19th, Wow, God, you give me your power. Let's read 2 Timothy 1, 7 together. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. Power. Power is what so many people strive for. In fact, if you, if you, want, to, if you want to try to boil, boil it down to one word of what... Uh, our national picture is all about right now with both of the parties at war with one another, you could, you could sum it up in one word, power. They want power. People want power. And people will go after power in many different ways. They will exert themselves in many different ways to gain the power over their job, over over what, whatever. They want power. We're surrounded by, by superheroes because that shows us power. We seek power in our life, but I want you to see the power that God gives us, the connection in that power with love and self-control. Love and self-control. See, God has given us power of love and self-control, and that is what drives out fear. He has a, if, if we are fearful in any circumstance or situation, if there is fear there, and we're operating in fear, I can tell you that is not God. That's not God. That's your own fear or, 
or you're succumbing to the temptation of the devil that is that he's whispering in your ear that you need to fear there is no fear for us but there is power and love and self-control and when we're operating in his power and love and self-control that drives out fear there is no fear then the next day day 19 for December 20th Wow God you give me a truthful guide who's always with me the verse is John 14 verses 16 and 17 let's read it and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you <clears throat> we're not talking about a just some kind of a, a principle here that we have we have the Bible to give us you know guidance and help but how is it that the Bible does that it is because of who is guiding us in the uh, in the uh, uh, actual devotional I kind of changed the word a little bit because it just struck me wrong probably being a little picky but it said wow God you give me a truthful guide that's always with me I changed the word that's to whose because we're talking about a person here not a principle we're talking about a person that Jesus gave to us Jesus came to give us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us he has given us the spirit of truth the spirit of truth you want to know what truth is have a relationship with Christ and have his spirit in your life that's one thing one reason why that we look at things that are happening in our world and and some of the things that people say and some of the things that people do are so irrational in our to our way of thinking we don't understand why people can behave the way they do why they can go out in the streets and riot and burn cars and write filthy things on buildings and break windows that that we don't understand why people do you know why we don't we we think that is because the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth tells us that is not right we have the spirit of truth to lead us and to guide us. It's a, it's the presence of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you when I go from here. I'm not going to just leave you as orphans. I'm going to send someone to you. I'm going to come back to you in the person of the Holy Spirit, and he will dwell with you and will be in you. Today, the spirit of truth is, is with you, to help you, to guide you. So I guess the question is, maybe we should ask, are we listening? Are we listening? Believe that he is there and listen, and you will experience his presence in your life. On day 20, Wow, God, I am that important to you. Are you important to God? Do you really believe that you are important, important to God? Let's read 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. That's a big word, isn't it? Propitiation. It simply means, if you put it really simply, he took care of our sin. He provided for our sin. He took care of our sin. He suffered and died on the cross for our sin so that we would not have to suffer and die for our own sin. 
How important are you to God? This is something that I think is worth spending time just meditating on. And even confessing with your mouth, as we've already talked about. And it almost seems, um, it, it seems funny, almost to say to God, I am important to you. Thank you, God, that I am important to you. Doesn't that just feel kind of funny to say that? But it's the truth. You've all heard it from the time that you grew up, you know, the, the little saying, something along the lines of, if I, if I were the only person in the world, Jesus would still come and die for me, you know, something along that line. You've all heard that. The exciting and wonderful thing is, is that every single one of us is important to God. And getting our heart and our mind around that thought is sometimes a struggle and difficult. But I would challenge you today to, with this verse of this devotional, just to sit and think about that and to thank God that He loves you so much that He thinks you are important, that you are, are important to God. And, and confess it, God, thank you that I am important to you. You might see that it kind of changes your life a little bit and makes you a little bit more appreciative of his wonderful love for you. And then on day 21 for December 22nd, wow, God, you use my hardships to bring me to you. It's a hard, that's not an easy one, is it? Let's read 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. We don't like to go through pain. We don't like to go through hardships. And anybody that becomes a Christian and, and is told that you need to come to Christ because then all your troubles will be over is not being told the truth. Jesus never promised us that everything would go easy. In fact, he told us just the, heart, just the opposite. The Bible tells us that, that we're going to have suffering and pain. And the Apostle Paul, who wrote this letter, went through tremendous suffering in his life. And yet he calls it the light momentary affliction. Now, you say, oh boy, my affliction doesn't seem very light. It seems pretty heavy. But he's making a contrast here. Your affliction compared to the weight of glory beyond all comparison. More than you can possibly even begin to imagine the glory that awaits us in heaven when we are, when we have completed this journey in this life. So, be not discouraged. Don't lose heart. A lot of people lose heart when they go through difficulty and struggle, but you know why they do? It's because they don't understand that God is working in their life. Have you ever asked yourself uh, the question is, if I had to live my life over again, what would I do differently? I think we've all asked questions like that. What would I do differently in my life? But if you think of it from this angle, all of the things that I have learned, everything that I have learned in my life up to this point to, to bring me to who I am today in Christ Jesus, would I want not to go through that if I didn't learn that? See, everything that we go through in our life is teaching us. Everything that we go in our life is, is molding and shaping us into the person that Christ 
intends us to be. And we can either embrace that and grow and become more like Jesus and become stronger in our faith and, and experience more of his presence and his blessing in our life, or we can complain about it, we can gripe at God about it, we can get angry about it, and we can turn away to our own destruction and demise, by the way. The afflictions that we face in this life, when we get to heaven, will seem like nothing compared to the glory. This is what Paul's saying, compared to the glory that we will experience there. God, you use my hardships to bring me to you. I hope that you have experienced that in your life. So that's what you're looking forward to this week in the devotionals as you go through each day in the wow God. And don't forget to pick up your copy, your hard copy, if you need one. I think I, we printed up every week. We've had to print up more because more people were wanting them. Uh, so if you uh, haven't gotten yours, there's still some out there right now. Uh, you can pick up your, your copy and uh, please do avail yourself of those. By the way, thank you for bringing your gifts in for the veterans. I trust that they're, they're all here. They're going to be uh, needed to be delivered this week. But thank you very much, all of you who, who uh, participated in that. I know it'll be a blessing to all of the, the veterans. Well, we're going to uh, sing hymn number 186 as we close our program today. Infant, holy, infant, lowly. We're talking about, of course, this Christmas season, Jesus coming in the lowliest of circumstances in that manger in Bethlehem and seeing him in a new fresh perspective where we can say wow God what a great and wonderful blessing you have given to us in Jesus Christ let's stand up shall we and sing this wonderful Christmas song